Hello everyone and welcome to the stream. It looks like we are good to go. My name is Adam. I am your host and I am one of the engine support techs up at Epic Games, though this is not an Epic official stream. It is my own private stream, so there will probably be a lot more cursing involved. Uh, so, you know, main part of the stream is helping individuals who have questions about blueprints, uh, landscape foliage, BSPs, though I do dabble a little bit in materials, I'm not very good with them, particle systems I know very little about, um, things like that. But if you have any questions about anything in the editor, please feel free to post them in the chat and I will try to have a look at them when I can, and if I can answer them, I will, if not, I will at least try, and if I cannot figure it out, well, by trying, I will try to point you in the right direction. Um, in the meantime, we typically work on things that are uh, t different tutorials and things like that. And I believe I actually had a question earlier, and I believe it was from Hey Bloody Bobby, how you doing? Uh, actually, I think you might have been the one who asked the question about uh, setting up. Uh, let's see, you were working on tick last week for movement and there was a problem with it. I had suggested using a bull branch check and that wasn't working out. So I had thought about it and I believe the next thing that I would suggest trying yeah, the, the next thing I would suggest trying is a timer um, to see if this will actually do what you were looking for. Because let's say I'm going to do custom event. Uh, just kind of get it to from text to blueprint. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so if you could, let me. I'm going to pull up my Twitter because I believe you had posted on there. And I'm trying to remember the exact situation. I'm sorry, I've been at work all day, so it's been, um, especially with 4.11's release, it's been very hectic. <laughs> um, so my brain's not entirely here, plus I am getting over, uh, over being sick. I'm still working on that. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see, stream tonight, that was March 17th, way too far back. Okay, March 25th. Uh, let's see. Total War, sadly. Messing with design. Uh, that was true. Um, streaming at 25. No stream tonight. Okay. I believe it was the. Boom. Maybe here. Nope. This is where everyone was posting what they were looking for. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Created a boolean on a branch. Run a sequence step one camera. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. Let's say you have your tick functionality, right? And you initially, let's say this is your do stuff, right? So this was your movement, everything. But you wanted other, and, and initially I had told you to just come up here, go... Uh, enable, yes, yeah, start with tick enabled and turn that off. But that didn't work out for you because you need a tick for something else, if I believe. So, what I would do, yeah, let's say, let's start with this. So, currently tick is not enabled. But you want it enabled for certain things but not for others, right? So, let's say when you press, well, first let's enable player input. And what this will do is it allows it allows you to yeah yeah this is you can you'll be able to use um, what I'm about to show you for pretty much the same thing um, I'm I'm just doing this inside of a, a blank asset but if you use this for the camera start you should be able to. Uh, oh oh okay yeah. Yeah, this should still work for that, because, let's see, let's say initially you don't want to do anything, um, but eventually you want to be able to turn it on for one portion, but not another, right? So, we'll start with this, 
and then move forward. If you press 1, we'll do a flip-flop. If you press 1, we'll set tick enabled. Set tick enabled. Boop. And boom. Okay, so if we press 1, set tick enabled, press it again, set tick disabled. And we'll place a copy of this in the level, and this should print. And then stop. And then print. And then stop. Okay? So that's how that part works. It's a very simple yes or no, it's on or it's off. But, let's say you want to turn tick on, but you only want to be able to do certain things in tick. Well, that's going to be different. Do once. So. Custom events. Start over. Okay. I'm actually going to do that. So now we can turn tick on once. But we want to do this. Let's say Boolean can do stuff. It's going to check to see if this Boolean is true on this branch. Every time the tick is run, it's going to check it. And if it's true, it's going to run do stuff. If it's false, it's going to run do other stuff. Right, so this is this is going to be our our condition for, hey, you know, you're not doing the or you're not doing whatever this is. So let's say this is your, you know, can move for your uh, your character's movement. Right. Well, if it's true, then your character can move. If not, your character does this instead. So press this and it's saying do other stuff. Why? Because we did not tell it to open that this boolean. All we told it was to set actor enabled. Now if we add a set can do stuff then what we get is we come in boom. Now it does does stuff because we told it to. Pretty pretty easy so far. It gets just, I mean, marginally more complicated. So, we're going to actually take this off. First thing we're going to do is actually go sequence. Flop. So what I'm doing here, instead of just e, e, this is just to show it because literally we could just do this and it'd be fine, right? So literally all we'd be telling it is do this then do this. Well, what a sequence node does is it allows you to run multiple pieces of functionality one right after the other right after the other right after the other and not worry all right uh so it will always go once it hits this node it'll go this then once this is completed run this then once this is completed run this it's a good way to organize what you're trying to do without having just a chain of of code you know going way out here so what I would do in this case, so right now I've got it set up to where it goes in, flip flops around, it goes, okay, set actor tick enabled, set can do stuff. Set actor tick enabled, set can do stuff. That's all this is going to do. Every time we press one, 
or every time we uh, press one, it's going to do this. And that's going to allow us to choose between can and cannot do stuff. All right? Do a sequence. And then what this will do is it'll check this and it'll go, hey, can you do stuff? Yes, do it. No, we're not going to do it. And then we can continue down here. So this makes it to where tick. So let's go other functionality. So what this will do is when you have tick disabled, nothing will run, right? When you have tick enabled, so like let's say you wanted this to be your camera rotation stuff, when you have tick enabled, it'll check this and go, okay, I can't move because I have not told it to change this boolean. Or let, let's say you don't change the boolean until you go through the second sequence, right? So once you have clicked this, set it to uh, set it to set actor tick enabled. That's the first one. When you press it a second time, it will set actor or set tick disabled again, but it will turn on can do stuff. So that the next time you press it, set actor tick enabled, then you have can do stuff. So this should. hit play. So now we hit one and it only runs other functionality. Now we hit two. Or hit we one. Hit it one again, stop it. Now when we hit one, it does both. So what this is going to do for you is it will allow you not only to organize your thoughts here and have a clear order for how you want to do things. Let's say this is your movement. So you've got movement. And then you can drag it up up here, do whatever you need to do to it. This one, camera rotation, drag this one right here, you've got that. You need another one that does stuff, boom, other stuff. Yeah, 